New voice, I know. New guy. Oh, normally the guy behind the podcast recording it, but I'm voicing it today. Woo! I am joined by Marcus, though. Say hi, Marcus. Hello. And we are also joined by a uh, friend of the show, previous guest on the show, actor extraordinaire, Matt Braxton. Hi, guys. You gave him that intro. I just get hey, it's Marcus. <laughs> no. Everyone knows who Marcus is. <laughs> we got Mar- Marcus. <laughs> Actor extraordinaire, Hello. friend of the people, <laughs> lord of the seven seas, and Marcus, champion <laughs> of the defenseless, the man the people want. So anyway, in this episode of the Can't Pauses podcast, we're going to be featuring Marcus's interview with Chris Barry from Red Dwarf. Steve, there we go. Yes, yeah, from Red Dwarf. <laughs> you, you did the interview. I thought you like might want to talk about it a bit, but. We'll talk about that in a moment. To begin with, I just want to have a chat with you guys, have a bit of a catch up because I haven't seen you for a while. Find out where you've been, what you've been doing, and give a bit of an update on the channel because a few things have changed. You might be listening to us on iTunes, for example. That's new. That is new. So talk to us about that, Marcus. Um, well, I think that's way better than YouTube because it's not a video. It's true. It's a podcast. Yes. So it's an actual podcast. Yeah, we're on a podcast distribution thing. So that's way more fitting. Did mm-hmm. you have to speak to Tim Cook about it? No. Yeah, we had to do a podcast in front of him. <laughs> yeah. Naked. And he, it was he a very, it, it. yeah, it was a Harvey Weinstein of podcasts. <laughs> oh, <dear>. oh. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> Surely that's too soon. That's not going to make it. <laughs> it's been a solid three days. It's fine. It's going in. Uh, we're also on Stitcher. You might be listening to us there and Pocket Cast as well. Um, the we three had to major podcasts podcast in front of the people in charge of those <laughs> you didn't have to it's just uh yeah we just, wanted turned, we to. just turned up and talk <laughs> naked <laughs> we just really wanted to make sure we got on their platforms yeah we decided that was the best way to move <laughs> see so what about you matt what have you been up to um i've done a bit of stuff for a show i mean in november a show what's the show the show is called shelly's heart Ooh. and it's about um kind of a incarnation of mary shelley in a modern day body as it were and she's going on this kind of ghost hunt walk around saint peter's church which is where mary shelley the writer of frankenstein is actually buried oh. and um it's a interactive um play mm-hmm. where you'll get to kind of as an audience member choose which characters inner thoughts you hear mm-hmm. and see so when you're actually at the show there'll be like monitors on the stage where um, you see those things. So I've been filming the inner monologues, the inner thoughts of John, who is uh, based on John Keats, the romantic poet, mm-hmm. from the same era as Mary Shelley. Snazzy. Yeah. So do you appear on stage or are you just a voiceover man? I will also be on stage as well, yeah. Ooh. So you'll see me real life and up on the screen as well. That's pretty cool. Yeah, quite exciting. So Where can we see the show? That's at the Shelley Theatre. The Shelley Theatre. In uh, Boscombe, yeah. Boscombe. Boscom, Bournemouth. Bring your stab vests. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a, yeah. Right. It's a, and when's the show on? It's the last weekend of November, so the 25th, 26th, around then. Oh. When do the tickets November. go on sale? On sale now? On sale now? Yeah. All get, right. Get so on over to the. Um, all the of Shelley, you local Shelley Bournemouth Theater. folk, uh, we'll leave a link to where you can buy the tickets in the description. And you can follow that and go see Matt live on stage and on TV screens and doing voiceover stuff yeah and actually participate by pressing buttons you get little remote controls and you'll be like oh i want to hear what mary's thinking or i want to hear what john's thinking <laughs> you get to press and uh, if you if you if it's most of cool. the audience votes for one thing it's like a majority gets to see their thing and you can actually mm-hmm. vote to replay a scene as well no way so you can redo it from somebody else's perspective that's cool yeah, I like the sound of that. Yeah, do you so, have to have like an app for that on your phone or something? No, else? no. So they'll give you a remote as you go in. We tried it with phones where there was like a website where you kind of sign in, but mm-hmm. then that was as good as your 
internet provider on your phone was. So right. that would be like, okay, nobody's voted. We've all been sat here for depends if five minutes with, uh, now. Vodafone or not. And ping. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's awesome. Yeah, so this is a new fun. thing. I've never heard of that before. Yeah, I think so. It's kind of kind of integrating some different technologies to build a new art platform, kind of in, integrating technology and art and media and and all things into one into one thing. Because you know mm. nobody can actually focus on one thing anymore. You've got to watch TV whilst you play on your phone and listen yeah. to music and We're you know paint that. paint in the background. So this so this gives you. <laughs> live stage with TVs and you've got a thing to press, click to interact with it. It's, it's um, yeah, all, everything. Good know? sound effects. Mm. Yeah. See, Marcus, this is why we always get Matt on the show because he's way more interesting than we are. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. That's brings not true. Brings fascinating insights into... <laughs> Like yeah, the behind side. the scenes, yeah, like how, well, that's, how that's the like, productions come to be. Yeah, and then you guys go and watch it and you go, yeah, well, that was all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got to press buttons. And yeah. Got to do some things. Yeah, so then you'll be like, okay, well, that was more interesting than going to see Fast and the Furious 12 because that was, you know, car chases again. <laughs> I'd have to get Vin Diesel's perspective on that one. Mm. It's the same old at this point, isn't it? So, Vin, if you're if you're available, we'll <laughs> we'll have you in, in in the studio. Come on to the show <laughs> for a powerful introspective. Yeah. <laughs> now, there's well, something uh, quite important I wanted to get your thoughts on, guys. Since we're about what five six days after the second, uh, the last Jedi trailer. And we had a little look at that before we went on air. So we can call it that. with me, last Matt, what he's done. And he's like, Marcus, are you going to follow that? <laughs> oh, fuck that, I'm going to start with trailer. <laughs> well, what have you done? Um, apart from leaving an Easter egg out until it went hairy very little since our last one, to be honest. Um, <laughs> Is that true? Did yeah. you actually do that? Uh, yeah, I found it. Oh, Still about shaving it down, but God, called, called time on it. Marcus, what the hell, dude? What? That's all I've achieved <laughs> since our last one. <laughs> Outside of the podcast, um, I know I came in swinging quite heavy with the whole London Comic Con thing last time, but I've got nothing this time. Next <laughs> to Star Wars, man. Nothing. Well, sure, well, hunger. Tell no one. <laughs> Underplay it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's been a few other changes with the podcast as, um, as well. Um, we've got a few guests lined up as well, I understand. Um, we've completely redone the website, so you can now find all of our podcasts in one place at can'tpausethis.com. Dot com, dot com <laughs> forward slash podcast. Um, they're all there in one place. Um, if you click each one, you can then choose to play them on your platform of choice. Are there two dot coms? <laughs> you said... No, I said dot com like dot com, which is bad. <laughs> we do not want dot com on the podcast. We've practiced it so many times. We <laughs> life. <laughs> dot com, dot Didn't com, say it once. dot com. <laughs> Can't pause this dot com forward slash podcast <laughs> forward slash dot com. <laughs> If you want more information about this podcast and you're not listening to it from the website, you can find it by going to can'tpausethis.com forward slash podcast forward slash CPT11, since it's episode 11 of Can't Pause This Podcast. Hmm. It looks snazzy, way more professional. Um, it's quite handy for us as well, because we can then just have everything in one place to refer you guys to if you want to have a listen. Anything else you want us to talk about with updates on the channel? Um, I'm, oh. I'm cutting this bit out, by the way. Well, why am I saying things then? I'm asking you, is there anything else you want to talk about? Before we move on? Cut, what? You're going to cut it out? <laughs> no, he's going to cut I'm, it out like this. <laughs> I'm going to cut out about. the bit where I'm asking you if there's anything else you want to talk about. Oh, right, okay. Uh, I didn't think so. No. Should we talk about Star Wars? Let's talk about Star Wars. Let's get to the meat in this gravy. sandwich <laughs> of gravy. The Star Wars. Can we just leave all, let's just leave all this in. <laughs> Let's not leave it in. Yeah, I'm yeah. absolutely cutting that out. <laughs> right, so let's move on. So, Star Wars. I'm super excited to talk about Star Wars. Everyone knows I'm an absolute Star Wars fanatic. It's mm. kind of bad. So, what do you guys think? Yeah. Excited? Yeah. Yeah. Who's going to be the last Jedi? Well, there's 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 three options, I think. In my opinion, there's three options. All right, hit us. Either Luke is the last Jedi because mm-hmm. he's the last one that's kind of followed in all of those footsteps of training and then, you know, everyone else kind of goes off, does their own thing. Yeah. 
Ray's going to be the last Jedi, you know, because Luke's going to die. Because Luke's going to, you know, train her up, and then he he's off. You know, she's the last one, kind of Cheerio. thing. Or three, Kylo Ren is the last Jedi. No. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. So he is the. That can't be allowed. He's the last one that's had proper full training from Luke's. Hi, Luke Skywalker's School of Jedi's that got burnt <laughs> to the ground. He was the last one to go through it totally, and then decide. Actually, I didn't like that school, so I'm gonna <laughs> gonna gather a few knights and and destroy it. Um, Can you imagine his like intergalactic Vista Print business card? Yeah, <laughs> right next to the Yoda <laughs> Memorial Hospital. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so he so he's like the last trained Jedi before he went bad, and then you know maybe he decides he's been struggling. They've had throughout the first kind of six films, it's like a oh I'm good, but oh the pull to the dark side is oh no oh I'm, I'm evil. Whereas now they got a new trilogy, it could be more about oh I'm evil, I'm evil. Oh no, the light side's kind of drawing me in. Oh okay, I'm going to be good now. It's a bit emo though, isn't it? It is a bit emo, but that's what you get. Isn't it? Star Wars is emo, though. That's kind of what he did yeah. when he was like, no. got a bit angry and he just like yeah. chopped down the machines in um, yeah, The Force Awakens. Tem- temper tantrum. Yeah. So he's just like a kid, isn't he? Well, yeah. He's annoying. Do you reckon he's going to kill there? Because that's what the trailer alluded to, but I reckon they're trolling us there again. I reckon that's like two completely separate bits of the film. They've just cut it together to make it look like. Mm. Mm. Build a bit of tension. You can't really kill parents in excessive films. That's just that's just cliche. Yeah, it's a bit. It's a bit co- copy and paste. Whereas, like, The Force Awakens was a little bit Episode Four copy and paste mm. to start with. They can't just. Well, I think this maybe looks a little bit like Empire Strikes Back copy and paste, but with that scene of all the yeah, ATATs yeah. just walking in a line, God, it's just like the Empire beginning of Hoth. <laughs> yeah, it's like Hoth. I really, does it? I yeah. like Empire, but like they did that with um, Force Awakens. It's basically New Hope. If they're just remaking the original trilogy. I'm out. Fuming. Uh, it'd be a shame. It'd just be a shame. Mm. I think. Just inserting like the little hairy thing for merchandising. Yeah. He's intergalactic he's space penguin. <laughs> yeah. He's the get new Yoda. Of, yeah, get him out of there for toys and then Empire. Just change the names about a bit. I thought that thing was well cute though. Yeah, it is. But... With his little squawk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually not too bad. Do it again. <laughs> One of the things I don't like about Star Wars though is like, they distract you with like things like that. Like It was a little rolling robot in the first yeah, one. Yeah, BB-8. It's like, hey, look at all the new stuff. And it's like, but it's not. It's basically New Hope, mm. except shinier. And then they kind of, one is to get toys and shit. But also it's like, you are being distracted by like, it's like, hey, look at all the new cute things. And then, hey, look at Chewie. And they kind of roll out old and new stuff. And then when you actually get mm-hmm. out of the cinema a week later, it's like, wait a minute, I've seen that film before. <laughs> um, which, you know, it's... I don't think anyone's going to Star Wars for like originality and visceral storytelling, but yeah, I think that's why I just with the new trilogy, I have a hard time getting really excited about it. Yeah, like the I'm prequels. I'm still super hyped. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, like the prequels might have been, you know, had a few flaws, but they were at least original stories. I think Marcus yeah. hates the prequel trilogy. I do. Um, <laughs> with the vengeance, but Matt is spot on. Like when I watch those. Like, the first time around I watched those films, I don't know. Yes, it's got some of the Star Wars kind of hallmarks, but... Yeah, but it's, it's it supposed a, to. Yeah, it's an original... There's original characters, they're not very good, but there's original characters, uh-huh. original stuff. Um, original stories. Yeah, it's... That feeds into the overall overarching stories. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the counterpoint to that argument, though, is that it kind of exposes Star Wars that when they get away from the basics, it doesn't go so well. And that that's not the reason those films were bad, but it just starts to like the moment you start getting away from X Wings and Tie Fighters and lightsabers, mm. it and Han and Chewie, it starts to get into this like averageness of films where it's like Rogue One again was kind of it was kind of original. Mm. 
But because you were starting to really depart from so it could have been any sci-fi film, really, except for the fact you had Vader at the end. Yes, of course. Of yeah, uh, yeah, I see what you mean there. Yeah, Rogue One. If you uh, change maybe a couple of details, that could have just been a space story. Mm. It didn't necessarily have to be a Star Wars story. It's one of my favourite ones as well. Yeah, I agree. It was really, really good. I, I liked it way more than Force Awakens. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. I did as well. Because I didn't know what was going to I didn't know who was going to live. didn't know who was going to die. And they were all characters that hadn't hmm. seen, you know, they weren't protect. It wasn't, you were protecting the originals. And True. With Force Awakens, you were setting up like Rey and Finn where... Okay, yeah, they so were, you knew that they were safe. Yeah, they were the heroes of the story. That's who they were building it on. So I knew they weren't going down. And it, it, everything was kind of to play for at Rogue One. The problem with that is that they didn't really establish characters very well. In Rogue One, apart from I can't remember the girl's name, Ray. Jin. Uh, the name Jin. for Rogue One. Oh yeah, Jin Erso. Jin Erso. Yeah, she was kind of there, but no characters apart from I suppose the robot was probably the best established. <laughs> but <laughs> he was funny. Yeah, so I mean that wasn't. It was good. It was good. But again, you're kind of getting away from what makes Star Wars Star Wars. Yeah. But then. The, you bring it back to what does make Star Wars Star Wars, and then we're back into New Hope, possibly an Empire rehash of lightsabers and TIE fighters and walkers, and we're back to the Rolling Stones playing the hits again at 70. <laughs> so, you know, but then I'll reserve the You were there, were you? <laughs> well, it's, they, they roll out the hits, everyone likes it, they can't do what they did 20 years ago, and people are really into it. Mm-hmm. However, we reserve judgment upon seeing this trailer and stuff. I'll reserve judgment until I see the film, number one, because it might be completely different from Empire. Mm -hmm. And number two, and this is what I was kind of thinking before we... we, Because we watched the trailer before we started recording. We did. Just to refresh our minds. Mm -hmm. I was thinking it, and I kind of want to make a point, slash, to what you guys think. Mm, And this might actually be the reason that these films are different. Mm Mm-hmm. Is uh, so Kylo Ren in the first film they kind of made him into a bitch because he got <laughs> smacked down by a chick who just like picked up a lightsaber for the first time. Yeah, was like oh, how does this work? And then beat him up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so and I get there's like the whole like oh he was injured and this that whatever. Yeah. Storytelling wise, you've bitched him out. Yeah. In New Hope, you've never done that to Vader. No. Million years because mm. he's your villain for like. Oh, yeah, he's, he's your big bad until he gets like the third act. Mm-hmm. So, I think they tried to make him big and scary by having like that scene where he lashes out, but it looks like a tantrum where the two stormtroopers kind of see it and then they think, "Oh no," and run yeah. away. They try to make him seem quite scary and and things like that. What I think they failed to do was to set up just how powerful Ray is, mm. which is why it seems like he was underpowered yeah. when they fought. If they'd have gone into a bit more detail of being like, "Oh my goodness, like Ray is so powerful. This is this is mm. crazy. We've never seen a Jedi like this kind of thing." Then maybe it would have been like, "Okay, so that's why they were yeah. on a par." In that fight, he was, you know, slightly damaged, which is why he wasn't at his top thing. She's not trained yet, but she's way overpowered, and perhaps that would have set up. Maybe they did it on purpose. Like maybe they bitched him out on purpose. Yeah, because that's going to be his arc of like, oh, I'm not very good at this whole evil thing, or yeah, redemption. maybe it could a ton of different ways it can go. Yeah, but you're now not into this whole okay, Snoke's the Emperor, he's Vader. Yeah, everyone's kind of playing their parts of the originals and you're going yep. to follow that. Thread. Yeah, copy and paste. Yeah, so it's potentially going to deviate. So, I'll see what happens. But Time will tell. Yeah, I'm more curious than hyped. But Fair enough. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. not maybe into the, the Star Wars as much as as yourselves. I'm well hyped. Matt, are you hyped? I'm, yeah, I'm well hyped. Hyped. Do you know yeah. what I am hyped for? <laughs> what? Battlefront 2? Nope. Yeah, that, I'm hyped for that too. <laughs> Thor Ragnarok. Hyped. That, that's my hype for this year. Hope. It looks like Thor meets Guardians of the Galaxy meets Planet Hulk. Yeah. And that to me, I'm what just more like, do you want? take my money. <laughs> yeah. It's like all the money. Yeah. Everything I've seen in that film, like every 
Yeah, they built it up and up until you now got like full trailer and stuff. Yeah. I just thought this looks better and better and better. They've taken like the best bits that make the Marvel film. You've got it all in one bundle and it's going to lead into like the next Avengers. Infinity War, yeah. Which I don't want to see a film just lead into another film. No. But I was like, this looks <laughs> the, like a good time. It's a three hour trailer for Infinity War. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> just a load of nonsensical clips like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. leading into that. Oh, it's a DC film. Okay. Um, <laughs> Shots yeah. fired. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm I'm stoked for that. I, and it's the stuff that you were like in uh, crap. What was the last one? Oh, Civil War. Yeah. And you were like, oh, that was really good. You know, I wonder what Hulk's doing. I wonder what Thor's doing. Well, here you go. Here's it's the one that you wanted to see doing crazy things <laughs> on a planet. In yeah. A gladiators arena. It's gonna be cool. Are you not entertained? <laughs> and then you got Justice League, which could well. I'm also excited for Justice League. It looks not too good. Not gonna lie. The no. the You've always discussed. Made it, yeah, they've made it like <laughs> a lot more marbly than their preview. I think they've learned. They've they yeah. kind of had to pick up on the lesson of like things being incredibly dark and depressing. Yeah. Batman v Superman. We're dark. We're serious, and people are like, "Well, you know, you come from such pedigree as like Adam West, kind of prancing about in his tights that." everybody loved you can't then turn around and be like I'm bad fleck and I I'm serious and I kill people with guns mm, I don't think that was I don't think the whole Adam West thing was a problem because like Bale pulled it off where it's like okay he wasn't like, yes. it wasn't going as dark as like what they were doing with, with Affleck but yeah. I didn't have any problem with that what I didn't like and I realised this when I saw Batman and Superman for the first time uh-huh. I did like a back to back screening in the cinema of Man of Steel and then led straight into Batman Superman. Cool. Yeah. And I got out after like five hours in that universe and I was just <laughs> like, oh God. Life, Depressing. <laughs> everything's dark and there's, what is laughing? I can't imagine joy. Yeah. Every, yeah, it was just a world, like a really dour world where there was like two jokes. I'm not saying I want like jokes filled. I don't need No, that. no. But it was just, yeah, especially for something where it's superheroes, mm-hmm. where it's okay, it's not a, uh, it's not Schindler's Schindler's, Schindler's list, list or anything like that. Yeah, you know, it's got to be a bit of levity to it. I you think know? that's why the Justice League will do well because they've got the Flash, which yeah. Barry Allen is like the kind of the light-hearted element of Justice League, and they've also got um, Aquaman, which they yeah. seem to have going all in on that. Yeah, one. they've they've kind of. Turn him into a sea cowboy, kind of like let's mm. <laughs> have fun with a trident. <laughs> yeah, but even like in the trailer, you've even got that after cracking jokes left, right, and center. So, yes, um, yeah. yeah. See, I liked his Bruce Wayne that was that was a bit jokey, mm. and maybe that was the problem. Maybe his Bruce Wayne was hit the right amount of jokiness, but I don't know. Even even in um, when he was Batman, when he was like, he's like just about to be shot right at the end by Doomsday, he was like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, there was nothing wrong with like his portrayal of it. It was just, I think that whole world. Yes. Just. The politics. The entirety and... of everything. Yeah. It was just yeah. too much. The uh, uh, alien. Superman. I, I think that's actually more of like that Superman is so dour. Yes. It's so like, oh god, everything's awful and I'm Superman and I'm yeah. strong. Oh god, why do I have to be so strong? Like, yeah, that that's unrelenting for like which I get he's gonna be in Justice League somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, for like four or five hours that was yeah. a, kind of a slog, a slog with that guy. Yeah, I think the problem with Superman is he's so overpowered, for want of a better word, is his story arc can't be Here's a big strong villain. How are you going to beat him? Oh, you're just going to soak up some sun and mm. punch him to death. It needs to be like, oh no, there's a train of sixty school kids about to crash, or there's your parents that are about to fall into a volcano. You haven't got time to save them both. Mm. What do you choose? And that that has to be his kind of moral journey oh. for a film. When the people hate him in Batman Superman, like. That yeah. idea was really good. Yes. It's like, have the people... He wants to help the people, and now they've all turned on him. Yes, great. Except it was mashed in with, like, a thousand other ideas. Yeah. So it got, like, three seconds of air time yeah. before... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say... Like, I, didn't, punching each other, I didn't but. really, like... I didn't really remember that element to the no. film. That's why it was so yeah. so fleeting. It really needed a bit more, like... 
Yeah, so his journey is, I'm going to keep saving you even if you hate me. But then they did that with Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, where he was like, we can't have Harvey Dent be the bad guy, so I'm going to be the Dark Knight. And Yeah, they just let everything breathe in their films. But, but yeah, there's some uh, interesting, there's some good films coming out. Kind yeah. of observing judgment, I think, on everything a little bit. We've got an but... exciting rest of the year. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, the main reason for gathering you here um, was to introduce Marcus's interview with Chris Barry. So, Marcus, can you just tell us a little bit about when you met Chris, um, where you met him, what the circumstances were, what you talked about, and then we'll play that interview. Yeah, so it was way back in February. February? Yeah, got to be honest. Um, Yeah, we had like a... So when I go away, like same happened with London Film Com. Um, I do like six, seven, eight in, like interviews in really quick succession, mm-hmm. which is great for the weekend. Then I come back and I give them to you. I'm like, okay, my job <laughs> is done. And then you're like, but I have to edit this into like, eight episodes and have to make it a thing. Yeah. yeah, for me, it's very like quick and intense. Like, but then, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, all my sexual partnerships. <laughs> um, <laughs> we went there, didn't we? Very quick, <laughs> very quick and intense for one, and very cumbersome and time consuming for the other. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to make it in. Um, it's going in. Brilliant. So, yeah, that's why they're kind of... Uh, there's still a ton from London to be released, like, over the next hey, maybe a few weeks. I don't know. Do you want to tease them? Uh, yeah, I, mean, I think I've, I've teased them a little bit before, but I'm doing a little, uh, little tease now, a little tickle. Um, Chris Thompson from Titan Comics, uh, brand manager, so chat with him. Um, last... It came out last week, last couple of weeks, uh, was the Dan Watts interview. So he's a writer for, among others, Titan Comics. Well, this is the guy who kind of um, reps those guys and basically knows all the ins and outs of Titan Comics. He knows what's going on, what's coming out. Mm-hmm. So got to have a real good chat with him. Awesome. I want to get that out soonish because obviously that's things that are coming up. So we want to find out about that before they come out. Um, chatted with SoCal Val which anybody's into their pro wrestling, which I know I'm the only one in the room who is. But that was about her time on TNA, who air on Challenge TV at the moment. Um, talk about a little bit of her time there, what that was like, some highlights and whatnot. Um, spoke to Andrew Robinson from, used to be in Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Cool. Uh, he was Garrick, so pretty major character. Yeah. Um, spoke to him about what his, his thoughts on a couple of the storylines were, his character. Um, a very smart guy, very interesting to talk to. Mm-hmm. So that's all still to come. Um, but yeah, this was Chris Barry was back in February. Um, got to speak to him about a few different things. Um, Red Dwarf obviously was top of the list, but there was a bunch of things we spoke about. It The other thing was when I went in, like he was kind of... I, did he was quite early on in the day so he was the first kind of really famous guy that i spoke to so to walk in and i've always watched red dwarf like <laughs> since i was a kid like, so uh, yeah i knew I was, we literally <laughs> they get all the press and stuff and they're just waiting outside the room they're going one after another yeah so i'm waiting outside knowing i'm going in to speak to chris barrett um so in and out come Bit sweaty yeah going in going out and then the way it was like a big suite room thing so you go around the corner turn the corner and there he's just like sat on the sofa it's like oh okay this is like a thing this is happening so yeah i had to sit down and chit chat with chris barry which was um and then the thing is everyone showed up like three man crews with like big cameras and shit <laughs> and it was just like me and my like audio Phone. recorder <laughs> yeah and a bag I didn't have to have anything in it just made it look professional <laughs> so <laughs> got a briefcase What's so honest yeah <laughs> i'm just like stood yeah just outside like oh so where are you from oh i'm like southern news tv i'm like oh cool cool get him a business card can't pause this and like you know trying, trying get us off. yeah yeah you know that's cool pretty major neck like ourselves <laughs> so um yeah uh it was actually i think it was a really good interview um he's a really funny chatty guy so it's mm-hmm. not hard work it wasn't hard work to yeah, um, sure. Get, get stuff out sort of stuff. That's yeah, cool. and he's like, I say honest, but he's just very like forthcoming about stuff. So you know, um, 
will happily recount he was happily recounting tales of dwarf and Brit's empire and whatnot so yeah um this will be playing in a, in a minute i hope mm-hmm. yes so any yeah minute, any minute now cool stick around for that um let me know what you think about it uh especially red dwarf fans because that is one of my all-time favorite things and then we're also the new series just started uh, a week or two ago so again yeah if you guys are enjoying that let me know because uh I always see the uh, dwarf guys. They do a lot on the south, so uh, maybe get a couple more interviews going with uh, various people from there. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Cool. So if you, if you want to get in touch with Marcus about that, you can reach him on Twitter. I believe it's at the Marcus Wood. It is. It is. Awesome. And Matt, how can we get in touch with you? Uh, at Matt underscore Braxton. If you want to tweet me. Too easy. Of course, we want to tweet you. I'm tweeting you right now. <laughs> You tweet me right now. I haven't even I'm got the phone. Two seconds. I think the last time I actually tweeted myself was probably like last year, and it was oh something. It was something to do with Pokemon Go. So that's that's how much I tweet. <laughs> right, we're going to tweet you right now while that interview plays. Let's roll it. Uh, afraid no massive camera, just my audio recorder. It's no, that's we're, we're happy about that. <laughs> it can be a little more relaxed. Uh, first question: Not your first appearance at the SF Ball. What do you think the value of these kind of events is to the fans? Um, what do you think the place is in the wider entertainment industry for these kind of events? Well, I think for the SF Ball, uh, it, it is in many ways a unique event given the difference, you know, between it and, and, and other conventions, which are, you know, much more straightforward, you know, a little more queuing impersonal. up. Yeah, a little, little bit, some of them. Um, but that's not necessarily, you know, uh, you know, you, variety is the spice of life sort of thing, you know. But the good thing about the SF Ball is that there's just more time, it's more relaxed, it's, it's a very friendly atmosphere all the time. Um, and, you know, you can you can sort of, I think the fans can, can get to, to talk, you know, up close, if you like, to to, to the guests. Um, and I think in, in, in the wider picture, that's... One of the main reasons to do these, you know, is, is to come up to the fans and, and, and see them and hear, get the feedback from the shows uh, and for, for them to sort of be able to ask us questions. Um, and certainly in the case of Red Dwarf, we have, you know, we're, we're a show obviously that is in production around now. We've, we've Series 11 went out last year and Series 12 goes out later this year. So we're right in the middle of, you know, we're still in, in production, if you like, you know. Um, and, you know, to get feedback from the fans is, is extremely valuable to us. And it all goes back to Doug, you know, who's the R Supremo. And, uh, you know, he, he will take on board what, what people want. So I think there's a very, um, uh, you know, it, it's, a real, it's a real plus point, you know, that we have now a convention uh, industry, if you like, uh, that um, just puts the fans in touch with the shows. Mm. I guess it allows for two-way communication rather yeah. than just constant... Uh, speaking of the new series for Red Dwarf, um, is it a case when you get back on set? I mean, there was a big break. I think it was series ten was the first new one. Was well, there was a big break from transmission of series eight was a uh, ninety nine, mm. and then we reassembled. I weirdly enough on the set of Coronation Street uh, in uh, two thousand and nine to do the first day's filming for Back to Earth, mm. which was the trilogy. Uh, in in oh nine, so that was yeah, it's a ten year gap essentially. Um, coming back from kind of big break, or even now, sort of later on this year, is it just you get back into it and it's like you've never been away, or is there kind of an adjustment period of oh yeah, this is what Rimmer was and this is what Red Dwarf is? Do you know what that ten year gap? It, it didn't take it didn't take long once you get the uh, the the costume on and the the other lads are you know. Craig's got the jacket on, uh, you know. Danny's got the got the hair on, uh, and Bobby's got the the latex on, and we get the dialogue moving. It all comes back very quickly. Snaps back, nice. Um, as you mentioned, it with these conventions, you, I'm sure you do get asked about Red Dwarf and fans constantly. Does it ever catch you by surprise that I think we are nearing 30 years since the the initial series? Does this sort of in, enduring success and the appeal and does that ever kind of catch you by surprise a little bit, or um, to a certain extent? Yeah, um, I think that you know now since the the restart, if you want, from back to earth through ten and eleven and going into twelve, um, it's almost like doing a 
a brand new series. Mm. You know, it's it's a different century. It's it's uh, uh, sometimes different techniques, different technology sometimes, um, and the surprise for me and the, the 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 great thing is we are picking up more and more fans. So we've still got our old fans from you know one to eight, and. Uh, you know, we, we seem to be getting more and more younger fans, um, and you know, so the fan base seems to be broadening. So, um, so th that is part of me did think that it would just be, you know, that we just have our hardcore fans, and we wouldn't have too many. We'd have a, we'd pick up a few younger fans, but not nearly as many as I thought. So when I go to conventions, that is the great thing. Going back to what you asked about conventions, it's just amazing to see the majority of fans now are much younger than me. I, I, think the old, <laughs> <laughs> I think the old episode, they're still so readily, thanks to Dave and all that, um, they're still so readily available that if people see a new episode, then they want to go back to the, the originals, maybe. Yes. Yeah, no, I, I think so. And I think, you know, obviously we're, we're still vaguely recognisable from series <laughs> series one to series uh, 11 stroke 12. Um, Can't tell a difference. Although, yeah, I have heard people walking past uh, at conventions and sort of go, what oh, is that him? <laughs> um, oh, so it's yeah. horrible. <laughs> yeah, I but, love the British public. But it, well, exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, as I as I have been saying, my son is um, is pretty good at that as well. He he'll watch the old things and look at me and go, Dad, what happened to you? You know, and I'll say it may come to you. You know, you may become thirty years older <laughs> okay. um, in life. You know, between twenty seven and fifty seven. Mm. Um, but no, it's look. You develop a fairly thick skin, you know. So none of that worries me at all. It's just brilliant to be to be back. Um, and the, the great thing is, Doug's writing is as is absolutely spot on as ever. We're still those early nineties. It's still up to speed. That doesn't suffer at all. So. No, uh, I think we've done some of the best the best work we've we've ever done in um, certainly maybe Lemons in 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 series ten. Uh, uh, Trojan for Rimmer was was a good one, and and, and certainly in um, in series eleven, you know, there's two or three episodes there that, that, that are right up there with some of the best work we've, I think we've ever done. Mm. Um, to question about uh, what you have got coming up, um, what is up for 2017? Is there any more documentary making in the work, or what do you you got anything lined up? Do you know what? Uh, more Red Dwarf. Uh, well, Red Dwarf twelve is done and in okay. the can, so. Um, so no, I, I mean, uh, as as I have said more than more than once, um, you know, a lot of performers like to sort of say, "Oh, they've got a string of things coming on," but uh, but I'm quite happy to say, no, I, I uh, you know, Red Dwarf Twelve. Let's concentrate on promoting that. Uh, there's a couple of other tiddly poo things that I, that I've got, um, uh, and of course conventions, you know, which which I'll be building up the mileage up and down the country doing those, um, and. Uh, yeah, a few other little things, but, but nothing, mm. you know, that I want to announce just now. So there we go, guys. Thanks very much to Chris Barry for taking the time to speak to Marcus. Thanks to Marcus for taking the time to go all the way up to Southampton to the SF Ball to meet him. Thanks again to Matt for coming on to the show. My pleasure. Good to have you here. Good to get your insights again into the sort of behind the scenes production stuff that goes into these shows. That's really useful to have. Uh, I don't think people necessarily always appreciate how much effort goes into these <laughs> small productions, but it's an awful lot. Um, if you want to see some more of our content, please head over to our website at can'tpausethis.com. We've got a whole new section there with all of our podcasts on so you can see them, see them, listen to them all in one place. And we've got a new section um, as well, all about us and our little crew and, and who we are because you can't obviously see our faces. So it's there so you can get to know us a bit better. Um, get in touch with us as well. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are about the recent uh, Last Jedi trailer. Uh, I'd like to hear if you're excited to see it. We know, well, Matt and I definitely are. Marcus is reserving, reserving judgment. <laughs> reserving judgment. Um, we're on Facebook and Twitter at Can't Pause This, so please get in touch. Um, let us know how excited you are. Um, we're going to be doing a show now every two weeks, so this will go out in a couple of days' time, and we'll see you again in two weeks. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye.